The content of today's video does not in any way reflect my giving about what anybody thinks. This is for discussion only. It's another Talk About It Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about people who jump in and clomp around with their boots and spurs and don't have any idea what they're talking about. It happens all the time on YouTube, and it's fresh on my mind, so let's talk about it. I'm Mike, and this is My Car Shop. It's obviously not my first rodeo on YouTube. I've been here for five years, and I've put out nearly 700 videos just on this channel alone, not including my other two channels. So I have pretty thick skin when it comes to what people think and say. But I still find it laughable when some keyboard warrior flies through my channel, watches one video, and has all the answers about that particular video without any context at all. It's funny because they really didn't even listen to what I say. They already had their conclusion based upon just a quick glimpse in a 10 minute video of the problems in my life. In this case it was that having a shop full of crap creates a bad attitude and a lack of motivation. Well first of all I didn't look at the video to see what the particular state of the shop was at that time and there may have been a few things laying around. I don't know. Didn't care enough to go back and look. But I do know that, for the most part, there's no garbage in my shop, there's no crap laying around. Everything that's in my shop is either there for a purpose or something that's in a stage for something that I'm working on. Now, y'all know that, you longtime viewers, you've been around a long time and so forth. But I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt. It's just who I am. And so I made a comment like, hey, thanks for your comment. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, there's a whole series on shop organization here that you might find interesting. I thought, well, you know, if this person's coming at it from the perspective of it's their struggle and they're just projecting that onto me or sharing their struggle, then maybe this would be helpful. And I got a quick response, no thanks. Great. Move on. Like I said, to be on YouTube, you have to have a thick skin. But it is interesting to me how quickly we jump to conclusions. And I think it's kind of indicative in many ways of the mindsets of a lot of people. I was very tempted to say, I hope you feel a lot better about yourself now, have a nice day, but I didn't. Again, I'm always trying to be the kind person, not the bigger person. I already am big enough and I need to lose some weight, but I'm always trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. But it's, it just made me kind of reflect a little myself and how easily and quickly it is to jump to conclusions. Not really the topic, but it is a question that I have is why is it that in this digital age, everybody feels like everybody else has a right to hear their opinion? You know, I kind of grew up in the world that was if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. But that's not the world we live in anymore. And somehow we all feel, I probably do too, because here I am espousing my opinion, and it should be yours. Uh, we all feel that the world has a right to our opinion, and we're very quick to make it known, and we have no filter. Because we just do it, we drop the bomb, and we move on, and there's no consequences for our action or our words, because freedom of speech. Now. Don't get me started on that subject because freedom of speech is about the government not being able to censor what we do. That's the point of the Constitution, but that's another subject I don't want to get into at all. Don't go there with me, okay? Please don't, no, 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 no political comments. No! I think it's important that we try to look at each thing and each person in the context of who they are, where they've been, and how they've gotten to where they're at. And you certainly can't have any idea what the you're talking about by watching somebody's 10 minute video. You have no clue, no clue at all. And I've even had people that have watched a dozen videos and jumped to conclusions and they have no clue where I've been, what I've come through, what's brought me here, what I'm working on right now and where I'm going, what my goals are. Now, as a side note, or maybe as a main note, it's worth saying that we don't really, we shouldn't expect anybody to understand us or get where we're coming from. Tr expecting that and demanding that from people around us is a quick ticket to crazy town. It really is. I think there are a handful of people who do get us in our lives and maybe they're not, maybe there's only one, maybe there's none. But the more important thing is, do you get yourself? And I think that's key. 
You know, if you're confident in who you are, and if you're confident in what you do, and I'm not saying that all of us don't have self-doubt, and if we don't have some self-doubt, then there's other questions we should be asking. However, by the same token, if, if, if we don't have confidence in ourselves and our abilities and what we're trying to accomplish and are satisfied with our personal progress and our personal growth, then we really will take what other people say way too seriously, and that can be very detrimental. I've got another talk about it coming real soon on this subject, but I'm going to mention just a key point here. I was really struggling with that mini video that I just recently did, feeling lost and feeling unskilled and feeling so insecure about my lack of ability to be able to diagnose and fix that problem. Now, I do know what's going on, as I said, at the end of that video, and I'm pretty sure I know what's going on with it. But as I was having this conversation with myself, as I always do, no, you weren't. Yes, you were. No, you weren't. Yes, you were. I realized that back when I was a professional mechanic, I was immersed in this stuff every day. I worked in a Chrysler and GM dealer. Uh, I worked in a Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep dealer, and I knew those products because I worked on them every single day, and I was surrounded with other mechanics who had a lot more experience, and we had the resources of the corporations behind us, and yada, yada, yada. And so very quickly, you come to be aware of all of the major issues and problems that happen and know what those fixes are. I'm out here like an island. I have an internet. I don't have necessarily people that I can call who are experts on these particular products. I have to research and research and research research and learn and learn and learn for myself what issues can be before I can fix them. That's one of the reasons why I stopped fixing my own stuff and started taking it to other people who just have more experience. It's not that they're better mechanics. It's that they have more experience with this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I had a conversation with myself and I said, cut yourself some slack. You don't do this every day anymore. You're out of, you're out of touch. You're not in the loop anymore in this stuff. And it was a good reality check for me and it reminded me of this also that when you're coming under fire and you're coming under criticism and the people around you are criticizing you, whether you're on YouTube or not, or it happens to be some stranger who sees you at a car show or somebody, family member who's well-meaning, who walks into your garage or your shop and offers what they think might be a constructive criticism, or maybe they're just a jerk like this guy was and just flaming you because it makes them feel better about themselves, then, you know, be confident in yourself and remind yourself, you know where you've been, you know where you're at, you know where you're going, you know what's made you this way, you know your organizational style, you know what works for you, and you're in the process of working on that and making it better. The goal is not perfection. And if the goal is perfection, then every bit of criticism that somebody gives you is going to trigger that lack of perfection in your life and you're going to quickly pull the handle on the toilet and go spiraling down. Let me clarify that I do have to exercise a lot of self-control to not say a lot of things that I shouldn't say on my comments to people who do these things. And, you know, I'm pretty intuitive in knowing where somebody's coming from, but I'm always trying to give the benefit of the doubt. And, and then when I find out that it really was what I thought, of course, I have to exercise another whole level of self-control rather than just, um, you know, unleashing the beast. Cut yourself some slack. Don't take what other people say too seriously. Be confident in yourself. Know that at any given time, the state of your shop and the state of your project is what it is because there's a whole context around it. In the case of when I did that video, the whole point was everything else that was happening in life and sapping my energy so that I didn't have the motivation to work on the projects. It had nothing to do with shop organization or shop cleanliness or anything else. I'm just tired, boss. I'm tired. All right, that'll do it for this one. We will catch you on the next one. Drop your comments down there. I'd love to hear from you. And be kind. I don't mind constructive criticism, but don't be an ashtray. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Rock.